God bless you and welcome to the First Baptist Church, Broad Avenue. Listen, March Madness and March Gladness is here. There's so much happening at the First Baptist Church. I wanted to take some time and just point a few things out to you. One of my favorite services of the year, I'll be preaching on those two Sunday morning services on March the 24th. We're going to be waving our palms and celebrating the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. We go right into Holy Week Revival with none other than Pastor Corey Alex of the Greater Pleasant Hill Church right here in Binghampton of Memphis, Tennessee. Outstanding preacher, and we're inviting all of Greater Pleasant Hill and the Binghampton community to come and join us on that particular night. Then we go right to our Good Friday services. Man, we have taken it to the streets where we go out and serve the homeless, and we make sure that people are well taken care of. Our Easter Carnival right here on our campus. And then on March the 30th, a new tradition groundbreaking right here in the Binghampton area in the Broad Avenue Park that is built by First Baptist Church. We're having a silent Saturday prayer walk against violence. We're praying for God to intervene in our city. And we want all of our friends and family just to come and walk silently around the track with us as we pray beginning at the hour of 12 noon. Oh, but then it culminates on March the 31st with 6 a.m. on the lawn sunrise service. We are so excited about that. We're going outside and we're gonna be on the lawn. Then we have a second service at 9 a.m. right here in the sanctuary for our children to come and do their Easter speeches and followed up by our final resurrection Sunday morning service at 10.30 a.m. You want to be here all month long. You make sure you register now in order to come for those Sunday morning services outdoors on the lawn. The only reason we want you to register is that we have adequate seating. Right now we have over 500 people who are registered to attend and we want to make sure that we can accommodate everybody. We can accommodate literally a thousand. So if 500 more come, we'll be glad that you came. And then on Sunday morning at 1030, just show up. Come on in, but get here on time because we will begin high celebration at 1030 a.m. A week before his resurrection, and just days before his crucifixion, Jesus entered the holy city of Jerusalem. He did not enter that city like a king. There was no chariot, there was no mighty horse. He entered that city on a donkey. Outside the city, the crowds gathered around to see their king, and they laid their palm branches on the dusty road, and they shouted, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! Hosanna simply means God save us, and that simple prayer echoes across time. 2,000 years ago, the Jerusalem crowds shouted Hosanna to their king on that dusty road. And 2,000 years later, wherever we are, we shout Hosanna, even still. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Hosanna in the lowest moments. Hosanna in the green pastures. Hosanna in the darkest valleys. Hosanna in the crowded cities. Hosanna in the open spaces. Hosanna in every church. Hosanna in every home. Hosanna in the victories. Hosanna in the failures. Hosanna in the beautiful beginnings and Hosanna in the bitter endings. Hosanna in the days of trial. Hosanna in the days of plenty. Hosanna in the days of sadness. Hosanna in the days of celebration. Hosanna in the morning and Hosanna in the evening. Hosanna in the sunshine and darkness. Hosanna in the years of waiting. Hosanna in the seasons of blessing. Hosanna all the time. Hosanna everywhere. Hosanna forever. Hosanna to the sun. Hosanna in the highest. Hallelujah. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. I'll say it again. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Why? For the Lord is good. I said, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth through all generations. Why? For the Lord is good. Anybody know that the Lord is good this morning? He's good. Hallelujah. We want to remember it.
said, the, all the things that the video said, Hosanna, Hosanna, we bless you. Hosanna, Hosanna, we praise you. Anybody know we deserve, he's deserving of all the glory and the praise? Anybody want to shout Hosanna this morning? Anybody want to open up your mouth and give him the glory? Anybody want to open your mouth and give him the praise that is due to him? Hallelujah, Hosanna, 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 he's worthy. Hallelujah, so God, we come to bless your name, Jesus. That is why we are here. We thank you so much, God, for bringing us here. We pray that you would be within this worship service, Lord God. Move our hearts to have hearts of worship, Lord God. Help us to empty ourselves so that you can fill us back up, God. Help us to remove any burdens, to release them unto you so that you can fill us up with your blessings. Fill us up with your glory. Fill us up with the things that you see fit in our lives, God. We will forever give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. And we say, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. We worship you. Hallelujah.
Let's continue to praise God on your feet this morning. Come on, stand with us. So I'm trying to see where my uh, palm praisers are. Because some of y'all praise him with your palm like that right there. I mean, if I saw Jesus coming, I mean, I, I think I'd be a little higher than that. Amen. I, I'd be making a little noise. And, and so as we continue to sing Hosanna forever, I want you to greet somebody in the name of the Lord. This is a celebrative Sunday in which Christ triumphantly goes into Jerusalem. And he knew what was about to happen. There was no mystery in this particular place. This was a reality of what Christ was doing. He knew that he was about to give his life on our behalf. Amen. And so we love the Lord and we celebrate his goodness and his kindness. And so as you celebrate today, find two or three people, hug them, let them know it's good to see them, shake their hands, wish them a happy Palm Sunday, and let's praise the Lord. Amen. Hosanna forever, we worship you. Amen. It is good and right to give honor to those whom honor is due and most certainly to be kind and to welcome those uh, into our worship setting. If you're a visitor here, I want to welcome you on today and thank you for being here. Uh, we know that you could have stopped anywhere in the city of Memphis and worship, but you chose to worship with us and I'm always grateful for that and I'm always thankful for that. Uh, and also, there are so many things that are happening in the course of this week. Uh, that I want to share with you uh, in the great things that are happening. But before I tell you about great things that have happened, let me thank you for the things you've already done. Uh, first of all, it's been a very busy two weeks, starting two Saturdays ago. We had a 
group with the Lynx, very large event here. On yesterday, amen, our own Broadfest was off the chain. The women did an outstanding job. I want to thank all of the women who did that work and the staff who supported them. I really appreciate it. And also we had on yesterday the homegoing celebration of Mother Aggie Dowdy, a longtime member of our church. Amen. Uh, she set the table. Amen. She know how to set the table. She was uh, uh, not just a cook, but she, was, uh, she had the gift of helps and hospitality, like off the chain on steroids. And so I'm grateful for her and thankful for all that she meant to our family. Uh, and then during the course of this week, let me tell you all of the things that are going on. We kick off on Wednesday. Uh, thank you, Craig, for this past week at Bible study. Did an excellent job. And then on Wednesday of this week, we kick off with revival. Come on, let's give that a hand. Uh, Pastor Corey Alexander in our Palm Sunday week or Holy Week revival. Uh, there should be a graphic on the screen any moment uh, about that. But it starts on Wednesday night. He's from the Greater Pleasant Hill Church. Uh, right here in Binghamton. We have invited every church in the community, all of the churches in the community, all of their pastors, all of their choirs. Um, we believe that the only way to eradicate some of the systems and, and silos that separate us and cause us to create harm against each other and violence in some cases is because we don't know each other. And when we get people together and get to know each other, we do a whole lot better. Uh, Pastor Alexander is going to be the preacher on Wednesday night. Uh, he's going to do, he does an outstanding preacher. You don't want to miss him. I believe our choirs are going to perform at least one song together. Um, and then we're going to just continue to go on in the Lord. On Friday, we have a community carnival that takes place. At the last community carnival we did in October, we had over 1,500, 1, 1,500 people on the parking lot just from the community alone. So we want to continue to do that. That didn't count membership. Y'all need to be here too, amen. And so we're going to come out. We're going to serve the community. We're going to do something for our kids, an Easter egg hunt, and all of the things that we do along with that. And then we also have combined that with the efforts of taking it to the streets on that day where we go outside of the church. You know, we do this every fifth Sunday, but this time we're going to do it on Good Friday. We're serving the Salvation Army. We have two locations. Amen. Let's give that a hand. Uh, I think we have three nursing homes that we're serving. Uh, we are serving three homeless population sites where we know homeless people gather. We're going to fix meals on Thursday and Friday, uh, sandwich bags and goodie bags to take to those places, pray with those individuals, be among them, serving. This is when the church gets out of the four walls of the building and hits the streets. Amen. And we do that every fifth Sunday. And so thank God for that. So we'll be doing taking it to the streets on Friday. On Saturday, we go to the park across the street, Broad Avenue, First Baptist Church Park, and we do a prayer walk against violence. And so surely on 12 noon, come on out. I hope you have a prayer agenda for your family, for your life. I'm going to ask you to add to that prayer agenda um, the city of Memphis and the violence that we've seen and that we have seen. Um, I'm thankful today. Uh, that we have the superintendent of schools worshiping with us, the newly minted superintendent. Come on up, Dr. Feagans. Um, I wanted her to come. Let's give her a First Baptist Church welcome. Come on, let's stand. Let's welcome her. Let's, let's, we need to do this. We need to give her the energy that it takes to get the job done. Amen. Um, wanted to have her to come. Uh, if you don't mind, I want you to stretch your hands towards her as we offer prayer over her on today. Amen. Lord, we just love you and thank you. Uh, that you have chosen, dear God, the one who will lead our system uh, with a heart for our children. We know that this job is a difficult job, so we ask you not to pour back into her, but to pour on her the oil that she needs. Lord, sometimes we pour back into people after they have been worn and depleted, but Lord, if you pour over her the oil that she needs, Hallelujah, God, she'll be all right. You have chosen her. You have promoted her. You have selected her. You have brought her from far, and you did it with purpose, dear God, and intent. And so I pray that we, your people, would get on board with that purpose, dear God, and that we would walk in that purpose alongside her, not to critique or to criticize, but to always cover and to prayer, to lift her up for her health, her strength, and everything that she needs to get the job done. I pray it now over her and with her in the name of Jesus. 
Jesus. Lord, because I know what a heavy assignment assignments can be like this. And I ask now, God, that you strengthen her and strengthen the team around her and those with her and give her right selection of personnel and individuals, not people who are looking for a job, but people who are looking to serve our children. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a great hand of prayer. She didn't want to talk, so I told her, that's fine. We ain't going to make a preach today. Amen. We ain't going to make a preach today. Um, but in a Sunday to come, we might have her to come back and say a word with us. Amen. Uh, let me go, go on to say when we do the prayer walk, we come back Sunday morning. Anybody excited about Sunday morning already? Amen. 6 a.m. service on Sunday morning. Outdoors, y'all. Outdoors. Amen. We're going to be on the lawn of the First Baptist Church Park, a park that you built, a park that you created in this community uh, because we needed green space. And I'm so glad that we are the architects along with God of the of future that he wants us to have. Amen. We are not afraid to create what God has already spoken. That's taking ownership. I love it. Amen. And so we're going to go out into the park on next Sunday morning at 6 a.m., and we're going to, you know, the Bible said now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning. Amen. Very, you know, you love to hear the preacher say right early it's Sunday morning. Amen. And, and, and there's going to be an aroma, a scent in the atmosphere because the women came with sweet spices. And so we're going to burn the spices and the aroma that they burned in those days so that the atmosphere of the park will smell in a beautiful scent. We're going to have our flowers out there and we're going to have candlelight because we want you to come and experience that Sunday morning service. It's something that was done many, many years ago um, by the late G. Patterson in our city, but we're, we're reigniting the fire of that service in our city. And we invited the whole city of Memphis, amen. I, if they crowd Broad Avenue, and if they write me a ticket for crowd control, somebody will help me pay it. I just believe, amen. Um, but we'll get it done because we want to do it in the name of the Lord. Um, we want to gather. And then we're going to come over and watch our children in their Easter play. We always give time for our children in this church because we know when we applaud them and love them in this space, they will always return to this space where they're loved and applauded. Amen. And then following that, one more service, 1030 on Sunday morning, we have the uh, service for, for uh, resurrection service Sunday morning. Uh, so please return two different sermons on next Sunday, one at 6 and one at 1030, Lord saying the same. Uh, be with us on those days. Let me say this. Also, we're going to open the facility next Sunday so you'll be able to tour and just walk by at the event center that we just purchased and that we are revamping so that you can have your own events. If we had had that yesterday, we would have had the women's ministry down there. We would have had a, a homegoing celebration here and a repast down there. We need all the space we can get so we can serve the members and friends that we have at this church and this community. Uh, we do choir concerts for Memphis and Shelby County Schools. They did the Black History Program and choir right here in this church. It went all over YouTube. And so we need all of the space that we have and we're using more and more. So you'll be able to tour that on next Sunday. I'm going to ask that the officers who are going to help us receive the gifts on the day would come now, amen, and that we would be uh, generous. You also have received a blue card on today. I want you to start filling those out. I want you to start completing those and drop them in the offering trays uh, today and before you leave today. Don't put it in your Bible and take it home and say you're going to do it next Sunday because you're going to end up using it as a note card, write something on there about Jesus, and you're not going to want to turn it in, amen. Uh, so I want you to use it. We're updating our membership so that we can know who you are, where you are. If your phone number has changed, your email is important. Listen, I know your middle name is loquacious, lo loquacious, but put an L on there, okay? All right. We, we have to delineate. We have a lot of members with the same first and last name. So please fill those out in such a way that we can get those and return them, all right? All right. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, where we are and what you've already done for us has been more than magnificent, wonderful, and good. I thank you right now, God, that you continue to prosper this community, prosper this ministry. We are placed in a place and we are blooming where we have been planted. Thank you, God, that you're stretching us, you're growing us, you are continuing to manifest your glory here in this space. Now, Lord, I ask that you continue to give gifts through your people that will be used for the edification and the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, all of those who love the Lord said amen. 
Come on, stand right where you are if you want to bring your gift to the altar. If you've already done it electronically, please feel free uh, to do that now. If you want to do it online, go ahead and do that now and bring those gifts before the Lord. pray over these gifts. Father, every gift that you've given has already been consecrated, dear God, as we give it back to you. Now we ask for the courage to use it in such a way, dear God, in which it pleases your sight. Give us innovation and creativity of thought that we would see obstacles as opportunities. And Lord, that we would convert each one of them into a testimony of your goodness and grace of what you have done. Bless us now in Jesus' name. All of those who love the Lord said amen. Hold on to your palms, amen. It's Palm Sunday, and we want to continue to praise the Lord. I want to invite your attention to Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, beginning at verse number 28. Luke 19 and 28, and then a second passage that I'd like to offer for your hearing. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 16 through 18. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 16 through 18. Again, that's Luke chapter 19 verses 28 through 44 and then first peter chapter 1 verses 16 through 19 amen
was wounded for our transgressions. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes, we are Turn to your neighbor and say, healed, amen. Already healed, amen. Jesus paid it all. All to him I'll. Sin had left a crimson stain. But he washed white as snow. Come on, stand with me. Lord, the healing that only you can offer is available to us right now. Thank you for your goodness, your grace, your love, and your kindness. Thank you for choosing to face Calvary on our behalf. Thank you for dying on a cross, giving your life for mankind for the joy that was set before you. Now, Lord, we ask of you to give us understanding of your word on today that we might hear and receive word from on high. Hide me behind Calvary's cross that I not interfere, dear God, with the majesty and the glory of what shines through in the person of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. All of those who love the Lord said amen. Luke chapter 19, if you have your Bibles, I would ask that you would turn your attention there. Luke chapter 19, beginning at verse number 28. And the Bible reads as follows. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you untying it, say the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. And they were as they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They, rep they replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it as he went along. People spread their cloaks on the road. And when he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. First Peter chapter 1 simply says this, verses 16 through 18, for we did not follow cleverly devised stories when we told you about the coming of our Lord Jesus in power, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. He received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the majestic glory saying, this is my son whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven 
when we were with him on the sacred mountain. We also have the prophetic message as something completely reliable, and you will do well to pay attention to it, as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. I want to talk before you take your seats from this thought, the majesty of Jesus. The majesty of Jesus. Tell your neighbor before you take your seat, neighbor, don't miss the majesty. Tell your other neighbor, neighbor, I got it, I got it, I got it. Without an intentional effort to search and discover the elements of value and quality in the things around us, we will often miss them because of the package that they are wrapped in. This is what Tupac Shakur reminded us of in his poem, A Rose That Grew From Concrete. Did you hear about the rose that grew from a crack in the concrete? Proving nature's law is wrong. It learned to walk without having feet. Funny it seems, but by keeping its dreams, it's learning to breathe fresh air. Long live the rose that grew from concrete when no one else ever looked at it or even cared. I believe that he borrowed this word or at least some inspiration from Ben E. King and Aretha Franklin when she wrote a song and they sang it, there is a rose that grows in Spanish Harlem. A red rose comes up in Spanish Harlem. It is a special one that's never seen the sun. It only comes out when the moon is on the run. Both songs depict that truly beauty is in the eye of the one who beholds it and has time to stop and to really enhance it and look for it and searches for the truth within what they see. However, surroundings can dull our senses. Familiarity can breed contempt. It is an expression that is often said, but the truth of it is we often lose respect for the things around us because they grow so common to us that we don't see the value in them because, after all, it's just something that's near to us in our possession. We don't think about those treasures that have been bequeathed to us from generation to generation that our parents worked hard for and the things that they fought hard to possess when others said that they should have no right to even possess them. And now that we are holders or beholders or partakers of them, we easily get rid of them and give them away as if they have no value at all. Jesus said a very similar thing about people when he says in Mark chapter 6, verses 4 through 6, uh, he says when we get it so bad, it can get to the place that we won't even give a prophet honor in his own hometown. We have to be careful because sometimes we'll have treasures among us and except that we really think something special about them, we'll act as if we have nothing at all. It is the packaging, it is the demeanor of a person, place, or thing that sometimes causes us to overlook them and the quality and value of them that is concealed on the inside. It is clear to me, even with my limited insight and understanding, that this crowd of people in that particular day missed the Messiah and the majesty of that particular moment because they were looking for a king wrapped in grandeur and grandiosity, and they missed the Messiah that God has sent unto them. If I may but preach for a moment and interrupt your Sunday morning schedule, there are people who also miss you because you are sitting right there among them and you are a treasure in your own household, on your job, in your family, in your profession. And the world is so busy looking for something great that they will ask you for a reference and not even realize that it's you. They're looking for grandiosity. They're looking looking for grandeur, and they miss the moment because we have confused greatness with other things that have nothing to do with being great. We love loud because we think loud means being right. We like big because we think big is being better. We like haughty instead of humble, and we love style instead of substance. We think naked is fine. We think if you got a lot of degrees, you are smart. We think if you can hoop 
good from the pulpit, you're a great preacher. We think because you got good sound in your voice that you are anointed, and many folk have confused sex with being in love. Y'all will say amen in a minute. But the reality of it is, is that it's not the package that really matters. Touch your neighbor, tell them don't get confused by the package. Because the package can mess you up. Because you will think the package is pretty, and just because it's coming wrapped in a bowl, you can put a pig in a tuxedo, and when you get it home, it's still sausage and bacon. Y'all will catch it in a minute. The reality of it is, is that we will miss things because of the package that it's in. And I need to tell you the day that Jesus did not come in a designer package. Isaiah said he grew up before us as a tender shoot, as a root out of dry ground. There was no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. And his appearance is not something that we would have even despised. Uh, we despised and rejected him. He was a man of suffering, sorrow, and pain. And that's why folks overlook him and that's why they overlook you. You see if you don't have a Facebook page, if your name ain't on the wings of the morning if you don't have a name with a sign out front of a door, people think that you are not qualified to do what you do. Lord help me in here but can I preach it like I want to preach it we missed a whole lot of real good stuff because we were looking for all the wrong things. Nudge your neighbors, I know that, I know that because there's some folk that miss me Lord help me in here. It's some sisters that can shout back at me and say he missed me because he was so busy looking over there that he didn't know what he had right here. There are some brothers in here that can high five yourself if you ain't got nobody else and say she missed me because she was looking for tall, dark, and handsome and I was getting paid every Friday and bringing my money to the house. Lord, catch it on the way home. We've all missed moments of opportunity, but that's why I love the Palm Sunday crowd. The folk who showed up on Palm Palm Sunday. Tell somebody they didn't miss it. I wish I had some Palm Sunday praisers in here who are in the crowd of the folk that did not miss it because the Bible said that there were some folk that were still coming with Jesus and even though he was riding on a donkey, they did not miss the majesty of the master. Y'all catch this thing. They wasn't looking for chariots. They wasn't looking for horses. They wasn't looking for an army. They knew that Zechariah had already said in chapter 9, verse number 9, your king, somebody shout back at me, your king is coming. He's coming lowly, meek, and humble. He's going to ride on a donkey. He's not going to look like the stuff around him. I ought to have somebody in here that knows that substance is not always stylish, and stylish may not ever have substance. Y'all will catch it in a minute. Y'all know some cute folk, and they act like they all that, but they ain't got nothing going on. The lights are on, and ain't nobody at home. Y'all will catch me in a minute. Do I have any witnesses in here that know that Jesus came as an ordinary man in an ordinary package, but he was everything God said he would be? Do I have any witnesses in here that know that Jesus was all that and a bag of chips? Jesus was everything God said he was. Do I have anybody in here that can witness for yourself and just lift up that palm and wave your hand and just shout back at me that he's all that? Is there anybody in here that knows that he is the fulfillment and the manifestation of what God said he is? He's all of that. And they knew well who he was. Well, let me preach this text, and I'll get out of your way. I like this particular text because it was the Palm Sunday crowd that got it. Tell your neighbor, I got it, I got it. In, in other words, they did not miss it because they were not missing the majesty of Jesus. First of all, because they remembered in, in, in Luke, the Bible says in chapter, uh, chapter uh, 13, chapter 19, they remembered the miracles they had seen. Uh, do you see that in verse 37? When it came near the place, they started praising God because of the miracles they had seen. Uh, tell somebody I've seen too many miracles to not know he's the king. Oh, some of y'all, I see some of y'all still sleep. I've seen too many things to not know he's the king. Uh, I ought to have some healed folk in here that were sick and didn't know you were gonna get well. I ought to have some folk in here that were down to your last whatever it was. Nickel, dime, egg, or miracle. You were down to your last, but you've seen too many miracles. Did not our God work it out? He is a miracle worker. 
And so when they were coming up to Jerusalem, can't you see the crowd made up of folk who he had done miracles for? There's the woman with the issue of blood. There's the couple at the Canaan of Galilee wedding. There's a man with a withered hand. There's a woman bent over for 18 years. There's a man at the pool of Bethesda after 38 years. There's a woman who's also had an issue of blood. Jairus' daughter said, don't leave me. The centurion's son said, I'll go with you. Do I have any witnesses in here? Lazarus was in the crowd. All of the people who Jesus had done great things for, they were making noise on that day. I ought to have some folk in here that Jesus has done great things for. Go ahead and praise him on your own. Has it done great things for you? Is there anybody in here that just don't mind saying he's done great things for me? I ought to have a few more folk that God has done great things. He worked miracles in my life. He's healed my body. He's given me strength, regulated my mind, food on my table, roof over my head, clothes on my back, shoes on my feet. Is there anybody in here? Song in my heart, glory and the lifter up of my head, regulator of my strength. Yeah! Yes, sir! Yeah! Yes, sir! He's done great things. High five your neighbor. Tell him I haven't forgotten the miracle. I ain't got so churchy that I can't shout about what God has done. They remembered their miracle. They remember their miracle. But can I tell you, it was two, two kinds of folk in the crowd. Before you take your seat, not only did they remember their miracle, they remembered your miracle. Uh-huh. Tell your neighbor, you sat down too soon. See, because not only has God been good to you, I ought to have somebody here who can look across the room and point your palm at somebody and tell them he's been good to somebody else. Do you remember when God worked it out for your neighbor? You ought to look at somebody and tell them God worked a miracle for you. And I remember what God has done. Is there anybody in here that can just go ahead and point your palm at somebody? Tell them I remember when he healed your body. I remember when he paid your bills. I remember when he gave you a job. I remember when he paid your bills and made a way out of no way. Yeah! See, they weren't just shouting for their own miracles. You gotta learn how to shout for somebody else's miracle. Huh? Tell your neighbor, this shout is for you. This dance is for you. This praise is for you. That last praise was my praise. But this praise is for me. This glory I give to God is on your behalf. And then go ahead and point at the camera and tell your neighbor at the house, tell your folk, I gave God praise for your miracle today. I gave God praise for your miracle today. I remember what the Lord their own and they looked around and saw somebody else who God had been good to but not only did they remember the miracles tell somebody they saw the manifestation how can I preach it like I want to preach it 
It's in 1 Peter chapter 1. They beheld the manifestation of God. Ah, I need to break it down for you because there are some of us who may not know it, but God is everywhere all the time. But he does not always manifest himself everywhere he is. But Peter left some on record in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16. He said, we were with him when the heavens opened up and the Lord spoke and validated that this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Now, I know, I know some of y'all can't shout with me on that because you have forgotten the day that the Lord validated you. When everybody else thought you wasn't nothing and you wasn't this or that and that you weren't capable and shouldn't even be in the room, but the Lord validated you and he opened up and let his presence come out and sign the work that you did. I ought to have some folk in here that folk doubted you and folk said you couldn't and you wouldn't and you never would. But God's manifestation of validation signed your name and now can't nobody discredit who you are and what you do. I ought to have somebody in here that when people never thought you could, you still get happy because God said you can. I ought to have somebody in here that when doctors gave up on you and folks said you would be healed, the Lord manifested himself and he let heal and come in the room when you were drunk and strung out on crack drugs and everything else. God healed your body and regulated your mind. I ought to have about 10 more folk in here when you were down to your last dime. Now you're living on Front Street and you got a big old house. God has validated you. Do I have anybody in here that the Lord has said, this is my child in whom I am well pleased. God has validated you. They had seen the manifestation. They remembered the miracles. And they saw the manifestation. Can I help you with this manifestation? Now move out of your way. Uh, God only signs what he ordains. Ah! When God put his name on. Don't worry, Dr. Feagans, who don't think you ought to be there. If God said, I want you there. Ah! and he put you there, can't nobody take you from where God puts you. I ought to have some happy feet in the house right now, that you're in a place right now that only God could have put you there. Tell somebody God did it. Do I have any witnesses? You on a job, you in a house, you in a space, that if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, where would I be? Yeah! Yeah! When folk gave up on you, if my mother and father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Here it is. I got to move out of your way. I got to move. But not only did they remember the miracles, they remembered the manifestation of God. God opened the heavens and said, that's my boy right there. Don't you know sometimes when you're doing your best work and it's way above your ability, that's God's validation of you? Don't you know when you're singing your best song and your voice is clear, you may be going with what you've been trained to do, but it's God that gave you strength to sing. When I'm preaching my best sermon, I ain't preaching by the strength that's in me. It's the Lord that gives me the strength to do it. And whatever it is you do, wherever it is you are, and God lets you do your best, that's God's validation and manifestation that he put you there. And don't you ever walk with your head down because God puts you where you are. I wish I had my folk in here that can just stand up and stick your chest out for a moment and just be proud of the fact that I didn't do it, but God did it. And if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? 
then I need my other folk in here that you waiting on God to do it. You stand up too and you stick your chest out and say, I'm waiting on the Lord. But while I'm waiting, he's still taking good care of me. He's still got a roof over my head and still blessing me every day. God manifests his glory on humanity. Well, I got to move out of your way. I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm finished. They remembered the miracles. They remembered the manifestation. But they also remembered his majesty. Oh, can I help you all in here? Majesty does not always come wrapped up in big packages. Uh-huh. Some of y'all going to miss some great gifts. Because you should be, you be do busy looking at the wrapping on the outside. The best gifts I've ever gotten at Christmas have been the handheld kind. Fold it up in small tucks and portions. Green, they usually come. That is the only one size fits all gift I've ever received. I'm too big for a one size fits all baseball cap. My head is too big for that. I'm too sexy for a one size fits all shirt. It's more me than the eye can imagine. You fold up a 20 and stick it in my hand, and I tell you, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. It's a one-size-fits-all gift. Do I have any witnesses in here? But let me tell you something. The reason we miss the majesty is that we don't know the value of who we are and the value of who he is. They miss Jesus, and he said, you're going to miss, you miss me because I came serving among you, and you overlooked me. Majestic folk are not loud folk, they're servant folks. They're humble folk, and they're people who get the job done. I'm going to move out of your way, but I'm going to tell you a little story, and I'm going to get out of your way. Uh, it was a story told of a little girl who received a car. Uh, it was her graduation. And her daddy said to her, he said, take this car, and, and, and uh, you sell it. And whatever you sell it for, uh, Whatever money you get back, that's how much car you can buy. First thing she did was took it and she put it in the paper. And it was an old car. And they looked at it. She got an offer back for $100. Uh, and she said, Dad, I can't buy much with that. Then she got another offer when she took it to a car demo show for $1,000. But she said, Dad, I can't do much for that. But then she took it to the original maker of the car who knew what was on the inside of it. They did not look at the outside of it. The first thing they did was look under the hood and said, this is all original. Said, my name is written on the parts as a signature, and I'll give you a blank check for that particular car if you just let me have it back. The little girl pondered it and she went home. And daddy said, what'd you do? She said, I finally took it to that man you told me about. And that man looked at it and saw his name on it. And he said it was a $100,000 off, starting real low and said, but I'll give you a blank check. And he said, how much did you get? She said, daddy, I kept it. She said, because I realized if he thought it was worth that much, it's got to be worth a whole lot more. And I'm just gonna go and get out of your way. I don't know what you think Jesus is worth today. He may just be a God who can give you quick little trinkets here and there. He may just be a savior who you think is just here to get you out of trouble every now and then. But I wish I had somebody who can nudge your neighbor and tell him he's more than that. I ought to have some folk who can just stand on your feet this morning and just shout, I know the value of my Savior. I seen the majesty of our Savior. Isaiah said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Is there anybody who knows he's a healer today? Is there anybody who knows he's a way maker today? Is there anybody who knows that God will bless your soul and save your soul today? God is a splendid king. And we often miss the majesty of Jesus Christ because we look at the material wrappings. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you today. I want you to behold the splendor of the king today. I want you to see the majesty of Jesus. 
I often hear sermons on Palm Sunday that are offensive to my mind. Jesus wants to untie you and all that stuff. I'm talking about a majestic king. I'm talking about the king of kings. The savior, creator, and maker of the world. I don't have time to profane his holiness. I'm talking about a God that ha, you can pray to. And he'll hear your faintest cry and answer by and by. I'm talking about a God that in your sick room, when doctors walk out and wrench their hands and don't know what to do, he'll heal your body. He'll heal your mind. I'm talking about a God that don't need a job to put food on your table. I'm talking about a God who can protect you when there's danger all around. The God who kept your car straight when your eyes were closed on the road that day. That God. The God that when you were in a dangerous place, he had angels in camp all around you. That God. The God that kept the plane in the sky and the train on the track and the wheels on the road and that God who watches over you day and night. He's a majestic God. He's King of Kings. He's Lord of Lords. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess. There were those who missed his majesty. But this text encouraged us, don't you be the one that missed. When you go out today and you see mankind, a man on the side of the road, be careful how you entertain strangers. You might just be entertaining angels on a well. Be careful how you treat people. They may be holy emissaries of God, and God wants us to see his imago dei, the image and likeness of him in all of creation. Take that person next to you by the hand and hold the hand and look at him and tell him, there's some God in you, there's some God in you. I see the God in you, amen. I see the God in you, I know he's there. James Baldwin said, uh, James Weldon Johnson said, in the trombones of God, there's a little of God in all of us. Even you, even me. Yeah. He's breathed his image and likeness into us. And I don't want you to miss the majesty of Jesus Christ because of the commons of man. Father, in the name of Jesus. Ha, you're high and holy. God, we approach you with reverence. We forget about ourselves and focus in on you. Thank you, God, that you didn't come in a Cadillac, that you didn't come in a chariot, but you came like a common man riding on a coat to identify with humanity, to save our souls. You're an approachable king. You're a loving God. You hear our prayers. You know our hurts. You are so well acquainted with us. You were tempted at all points as we are, but yet without failure of sin. Thank you, God, for being a majestic king who can identify with a broken creation. I love you, Lord. We thank you in this place. We bless your holy name. We lift our voice to sing of you today. How great thou art, how great is our God. And Lord, we declare that all will see how great is our God. In Jesus' name. Come on, lift your voices and sing with me today. How great, how great, how great. The door of my father's house is open. Remain standing if you're in this building and you're looking for a space of worship, a place of connection. Would you come today? You need a church home. You need a church family. You need a place of connection. 
a place to remind you of the miracles and help you see the manifestation of God's validation in your life. A place that points to the majesty of our master. All will see. Come on, just put those palms in your hand and let's just praise him today. Come on. Come on, sing. God bless you, God bless you. Let's give my sister a hand, amen. Come on, give her a hand. I hope you get it. I hope you don't search too far to look for the majesty of God. I hope you don't miss the miracles of God. I hope you don't miss the manifestation of God. Can I give you your first clue today that you've already seen it? You woke up this morning. You woke up this morning. You know you didn't do that on your own, don't you? You know, the fact that you're here right now, you've already experienced the miracle and seen the manifestation, and you ought to thank him for his majesty, amen. Come on, put those hands together, amen. Do you need another clue? You woke up this morning, and you're here in your right mind. You know, you don't have socks on your hands and gloves on your feet, amen. You all right, amen. That's of God and not of you, amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. You went to sleep last night. Your food digested in your body. You got up this morning. You ate some. You drank some. You're here. Your medicine is working. Whatever it is, it's all because of God. Amen. Come on, praise the Lord in this house on the day. Amen. Name above all names. Worthy of all praise. Come on, lift your voice and sing with me. How great, how great is our God. by the hand we're gonna get out of here but just tell them before we leave I praise God for your miracle today I praise God for your miracle today I thank them for you today I, I, I praise them on your behalf Raphael I had you on my mind when I told God thank you today amen it wasn't just me I was thanking him for it was me and you it was us. I've seen his miracles. I've seen his manifestation. And every day I behold his majesty. Next Sunday when we gather, <laughs> Lord saying the same. According to all of the predictions at 648, the sun is going to rise. <laughs> You've never beheld the majesty of God. 
Take some time to watch the sun come up. I just drove. And I wanted to come sit over here the other day. And I said, Lord, show me. And I watched the sun come up. And I said, how long have I overlooked your majesty? And while the sun was coming up, he sent the choir out there. Y'all have heard the birds, haven't you? They started singing. Ah! And then as the birds start singing, the wind started blowing. And I said, God, look at you. All I asked was just to see the sun come up. He said, but I sent ushers to attend to your tears. I sent a choir to sing to your soul. God is a great God. Every day of your life, don't you miss the majesty. Don't you go through life looking at the messes around you. And you miss the majesty of God. Yeah, there's some bad stuff going on. There's some tough things happening. But he's God in all things. And he's going to stand up and show up and speak up. Neighbor, don't miss the majesty of our God. I'll see you on Wednesday night. I'll see you next Friday, next Saturday, and next Sunday. Until then, may God be with you. Amen. You're a great God.